Hi, I'm Noah. This summer my wife and I are having twins. Someday they will rule Poland. I promised you I'd say more about the process of baby naming, so here it is, more on names. <clears throat> That's better. Today I want to talk about sources, places to look for baby names. A great place to look for names, uh, at least from a Western perspective, is of course the Bible. Um, these are names that have stood the test of time, people know them, people know how to spell them, sometimes. Sidebar, when Michael Jackson died, practically every trending topic on Twitter was about him, including Mikheil Jackson, spelled M-I-C-H-E-A-L. <sighs> yes. Enough people were spelling the name wrong to make it a trending topic. Enough people cared enough about Michael Jackson to tweet about him, but didn't know how to spell the name Michael, which is the most popular boy's name of the last 20 years. Seriously, America, there is a reason why this country is now a wholly owned subsidiary of the People's Republic of China. I like biblical names for fairly obvious reasons, though of course sometimes when we tell people that my name is Noah and my brother's name is Abraham, they assume that we're insane Bible thumpers who believe that the only true path to heaven is by eating buttermilk and barley sandwiches and shooting Mexicans on sight. Yes, my brother's name is Abraham, but my grandfather was the most lapsed of lapsed Jews, but somehow he wound up with grandsons named Noah, Benjamin, Abraham, Samuel, Aaron, Daniel, and Jeremiah. Conversely, all of his granddaughters have these Jane Austen names, Jane, Jessica, Emma, and Tessa. Another good source for names is Shakespeare, but, well, actually, it's not such a great source for, uh, for boys' names, because uh, uh, men in Shakespeare either have very standard British names like John or Henry, or, or they have uh, uh, these sort of impossibly fanciful Italian names like Prospero or Malvolio, or they have names that are just dirty sex puns like uh, Falstaff or Pickle Dick. There isn't really a Shakespearean character named Pickle Dick, but there ought to be. But Shakespeare is full of great names for girls. Rosalind, Cecily, Portia, Miranda, uh, Cordelia, Viola, etc. There isn't really any Shakespearean character named etc., but there ought to be. Then, of course, there's family names. Now, for my own personal taste, I'm not a great fan of giving a child your own name or that of any close relative who's still alive. Actually, in the Jewish tradition, it's considered unlucky to name a child after a relative who's still living. But if you go back a few generations on your family tree, you'll probably find some good ones. Of course, this gets into the problem of giving your child a name that seems like an old person name. But remember that these things are cyclical. Um, in 50 years, everybody's grandmother is going to be named Brittany or Tiffany or Chelsea. Does this mean that all little girls born in 2060 are going to be named Ethel or Prudence? I don't know, but I definitely could see some old lady names coming back, like uh, Rosa or Clara. Remember that only a few years ago, Sophia was definitely an old lady name, and now it's the fourth most popular name for baby girls. On the other hand, some old-fashioned names are never coming back into style. For example, Dorcas. Yes, that's a real name. A real woman's name. Not a real happy woman's name, but a real name. There's a reason the song doesn't go, who's skipping down the streets of the city, smiling at everybody she sees. Everyone knows it's Dorcas. Still so much more to say about names. Do you have any good sources for baby names? Please. Let me know, and I'll talk about him next time. Thanks. Bye.